Rodney King is the father of mixed martial arts in South Africa. He not only schooled most of today's contenders in their clinically brutal ways, but was perhaps the most terrifying fighter in his day. However, several years back, they began questioning why he thrived on battering other men into submission. He turned away from the scene and became a vocal counterculture to the movement he helped establish. It's hard to pinpoint exactly where that happened. I think I need to also be clear here. Um, in principle, I don't have a problem with, with mixed martial arts. If we have to break it down, what is mixed martial arts? From a martial arts standpoint, really all that is, is that it's a combination of the stand-up, the clinch and the ground game. And what it is, it's, it's a it's a one-on-one -on -one kind of altercation or fight, and some people call it a sport against another person. So it's one-on-one, -on -one, basically, using all three games. That's nothing new. That's been around since the, the Greek times. Rodney's main problem with the fight game is the type of people it attracts and, to some extent, creates. Where my issue lies with it is that I really think that there's a crisis in masculinity, and I think this is part of the, 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 the draw towards mixed martial arts and what you find is you tend to find that they in the demographics are 16 to 26 are the main people that get involved in mixed martial arts um, and I think a lot of the old structures that were in place that kind of helped young men define their masculinity are no longer available in the 21st century that's kind of disappeared for a lot of guys and I think that's part of the attraction in mixed martial arts is that it allows them to feel some kind of presence as a man from a physical standpoint and you know no matter how much society tries to fight this that all men want to feel physically in control of themselves and their bodies and mixed martial arts offers them an avenue for that I mean it's the one place where you can get tough where you can become rugged and it is the one place where other men will fear you. Rodney worries about the long-term consequences of guys living in fight mode for extended periods while preparing for a bout in the cage. You know, just going into that mindset every single night of being aggressive and getting to that point where you have to get really aggressive inside in order to do the business, how does that affect society and, and relationships and the culture that we live in? Nobody's talking about that. It's almost like it's taboo, like you shouldn't be talking about that stuff. And one of the things that I've always felt about any subject is that we've got to look at both sides here. Of course, there's the positive side. I really believe that there's a positive side to MMA if it's directed and processed properly. But we also need to look at the negative side because if, unless we're looking at the negative side, how can we put, you know, um, measures in place that will allow guys to work through this constructively and creatively and not just self-destruct? And we hear examples of, of MMA guys self-destructing all the time now, and it happens, and, and it's a fact. And it, I mean, nobody wants to talk about the drug scene in, in mixed martial arts in South Africa. Rodney's approach is to use martial arts to help add balance to the lives of the clients he trains. The old symbology in martial arts where you have the yin and the yang. The yang is the warrior archetype, but the yin is the softer side. So you try to bring a middle path there. If you only have the yang, you're gonna have all this dark side but you're not going to have anything to balance it out. And one of the things that the, that the warrior culture understood, like the samurai, they understood that. That's why they enforced the samurai to go through those kind of disciplines, artistic disciplines, because it would balance them. Rodney's worldwide martial arts program, Crazy Monkey Defense, aims to invoke all the varied values that characterize the martial arts of old. Fundamental focus, if you talk to any of the Crazy Monkey Defense coaches around the world, they're going to tell you that the main thing that we do here is that we use martial arts as a vehicle to help our clients become champions in life. So it's a life performance vehicle using martial arts. Peer through the stadium lighting and smoky entrances, and mixed martial arts is a pursuit with one aim, assault the man in front of you. Some talk very lightly of this aspect, but we can't ignore that the sport is about elbows to the skull, chokeholds, and the capacity to bear pain. But at the same time, it's a sophisticated discipline requiring the very best of athletes to master its vast science of tactics and skills. Having grappled its way to more mainstream appeal than anyone could have predicted a decade ago, precisely where this unforgiving yet engrossing theatre will be in another 10 years, nobody knows. Certainly in the US, pay-per-view ratings have already begun overtaking all American pastimes like football and boxing. So far in South Africa, the sport has followed a similar growth pattern to the market leading Americans. But just how many more of us have the stomach for this brutal sport remains to be seen.